it's a very nice day. I know I talk about the weather all the time, but just when your days are spent like trying to get out of the house, it has a big impact, you know. Anyone who's spent time with kids will know about the baby jiggle. It's not working. so I just wanted to talk a bit about um, motherhood and creativity which I finished this is by Rachel Power it's published by a firm press a local Melbourne indie press and this is a series of interviews um, with a bunch of Australian women artists who are also mothers so the ones listed on the front are Claudia Cavan who's a well very well known Australian actor well she's well known here I don't know how well she'd be known overseas um Holly Throsby who is a singer songwriter and an author Rachel Griffiths Claire Bowditch or Bowditch never quite sure how you say that one Kate Kennedy Tara June Winch Nikki Jemmel uh there were heaps of other ones there were it was a mixture of writers like visual artists filmmakers, dancers, um, yeah, in any sort of artist and how they negotiate being a mother and being an artist, <laughs> obviously, that's the name of the book. But more what I mean is like negotiating, looking after children and being a carer of children, but also having an artistic drive and how to fit that in. And so a lot of it articulated feelings of guilt and struggle and feeling torn between wanting to parent or not not even wanting to parent but wanting to work on the art you know and how the how you feel you know particularly for actors or filmmakers who might have to go on set for a six-week shoot and not see their kids for six weeks or only see them very briefly and what do you do when you're pregnant or have a small baby and have these very intense schedules um or writers who are the primary carer, like, or can't afford childcare, you know, how do you fit that in? Or if you don't want to use childcare. So it was a whole lot of really different approaches and um, different practical solutions, or not solutions, but strategies, I suppose, for making sure you get art done and try and be a, the best parent that you can. So I found it really helpful. I mean, the writing... Um, it's written in a prose style, so it's not just questions and answers. It's sort of the transcriptions of the conversation that Rachel Power had with each of them. So sometimes the writing feels not clunky, but it's written as prose, but it doesn't always flow that well. But overall, if you're a mum and an artist, I really recommend this. I found it like it didn't solve my problems, <laughs> but I found it really helpful to know that... Um, you know, finding things hard is normal. If you think about Twitter in 2014, it was like a whole different, it almost feels like a decade ago. Is that like... Oh, I don't know if you can hear Harry crying in the background. Not crying, just making, making fun sounds. So I wanted to... Oh, sorry. I'm trying to centre myself a bit better here. I did finish, and I don't want to talk about these ones too much because they're shortlisted for the readings prize and I want to make um, a video or two about reading that shortlist, which I'm buddy reading with Jacqueline, Natalie and Simon and that's proving to be lots of fun. The first one was A Superior Spectre by Angela Meyer from Ventura Press and the other one was Inappropriation by Lexi Fryman, which came out through Alan and Unwin. I, I liked things about both of them and I found was frustrated by elements of both of them. Won't talk about them too much. A Superior Spectre is just briefly about um, a man who uses some new technology to inhabit the mind of a young woman in the 19th century. All about power dynamics, sexuality, all sorts of weird stuff. Um, very creepy. 
Inappropriation is a satire, I would say, of identity politics set in a very wealthy Sydney private girls' school. Um, and it's sort of a coming, in, coming of age story, but also, uh, yeah, very provocative satire, which I struggled with at times and other times found funny. So I'll talk about those properly in another video. I'm also reading, or I started reading, uh, It Sounded Better In My Head by Nina Kennel. This is the proof copy. It is out from text. It is a YA contemporary, I suppose, set in Australia. And it's really one of texts, you've probably seen it um, on Instagram. There's a lot of promotion going on. Probably one of their showcase lead titles for the year, I'd say. And yeah, it's got it's fine. It's going well so far. It seems to be sort of a romantic comedy, I guess, but also about friendship. The main girl's parents get divorced on the first page, and she is struggling with that. And it's about her working through it with her friends and guys and stuff. So I'm a, I'm not very far in. I'm only about a third of the way through. So I will let you know how that pans out when I get to it. Hi guys, um, so I thought I'd just give a quick update on the Melbourne Writers Festival. I only went to three events this year. I say only, I'm pretty sure last year I didn't go to any, so three is pretty good. Um, but I had a really great time. So I did show some footage of last Tuesday night when I saw Deray McKesson. So if you don't know, Deray McKesson is, he was sort of one of the lead activists and organizers of the Black Lives Matter movement and protest and he's just written a book I'm gonna put an image of it up it's called the other side of freedom or the other side to freedom or something anyway he was really great he spoke a lot about the protest but he also spoke about um, yeah I mean he spoke a lot about Black Lives Matter and gave a lot of um, you know really devastating information about the state of police brutality, basically, against black people uh, or black Americans. And it was really informative, but he also just talked a lot about uh, resistance in general and, you know, different strategies in which, um, you know, you can approach activism to see real results um, or at least to get the conversation going. And that was excellent. So yeah, he spoke for about half an hour and then he had sort of a question and answer time facilitated by Benjamin Law, who's an Australian writer. And that was a really great session. I really want to read his book. I didn't uh, buy it because it was a Tuesday night and I was really exhausted and there were about a thousand people there queuing up. So I just came home, but I will get the book at some point and read it. And as far as I'm aware, the book is sort of a retelling of the 400 day, well, just kind of a memoir reflecting on the movement um, and the protest, which was 400 days, and which is just exhausting. And But also a lot of the stuff that he talked about in his talk about, you know, how we can be better at making change, really.
So I saw him. I also yesterday saw Daniel Mallory Ortberg do a live Dear Prudence show um, with Clementine Ford, who's an Australian feminist writer. And they were great. It was really good. It was hilarious. It was moving. It was, you know, Daniel Ortberg is just so charming and lovely. Um, and the advice they gave was spot on as usual. And I did pick up a copy, I don't have it with me, of the Mary Spinster, um, Daniel Wartburg's collection, sort of of re, like feminist retellings of fairy tales and other well-known sort of stories. And I've only read the first two. The first one was a retelling of The Little Mermaid, which was pretty great. Um, I won't spoil it, but it had a really like snarky sort of narrative voice. And also just ended in a really great way. And then the next one was this really interesting retelling of Cinderella. I actually didn't pick up that it was a Cinderella retelling until I read a review. But it was really cool and there was a lot of... I wouldn't say gender fluidity in the sense that there were men and women, girls and boys. But the roles of husband and wife were separate roles that either gender could take on. Um depending on what they wanted and how they organised things with their spouse. So once you get married, you choose whether you want to be a wife or a husband. Um, and you have to undergo specific training to be a wife or a husband. It was really interesting. I liked it a lot. I'll be thinking about it for a while. So I'm looking forward to getting into the rest of those. It's a pretty short book, so I'll probably finish it soon and be able to update you. And the other person I saw was Alexis Wright, who's an Australian Indigenous writer. And she was talking about the Swan Book, which came out a few years ago and won the Miles Franklin, I think, and, or Carpenteria definitely did, but, and her other book, Tracker, won the Stella last year. So she's really um, well accoladed. I actually haven't read any of her books, but I really want to read the Swan book after the talk she gave. It was co-hosted by Melbourne Uni, and um, so she was in discussion with an academic who had obviously done a lot of work reading the swan book and it was yeah it just sounds so fascinating like there's a really interesting prose style and it's set in the future it's sort of like a dystopia um where there are all these refugees coming in and the swans are kind of a metaphor and yeah it sounds really great i'm doing a really terrible job of explaining it but basically alexis wright was talking about how she wants indigenous australia and i think broader australia to be able to have she called it a self-governing literature, so a literature that's not beholden to all the tropes and conventions of white European literature, which is obviously what um, the colonisers brought with them when Australia was colonised. And so the Swan Book does not have a conventional narrative, it doesn't have a conventional prose style um, or any sort of conventional resolution. So I thought that sounded really interesting and I hope to pick that up soon. I didn't buy a copy of that because they weren't selling the book at the event. I think because it was at the uni um, rather than at one of the other festival events. Anyway, I'm about to go out for brunch with a friend and I'll check in soon. Sorry, I'm just taking some footage for the YouTubes. <laughs> Let my loneliness is killing